In this video, I'm going to talk to you about guitar picks and about choosing the right one for your guitar playing. If you're a beginner, you probably go to a store and you're not exactly sure what to get. Um, so I'll tell you some of the things that I recommend. Um, first of all, everybody, every guitarist has a different preference for picks. So the picks I'm going to start out showing you are not actually the picks that I use now, but I will talk about them as well. Um, so for beginning guitarists, um, one of the first things that I would recommend, I used to work at a, a music store that sold uh, guitar supplies. Um, and I talked to a lot of beginners about picks all the time. And actually Dunlop has these really great packs of picks. I don't know if they still have them. I hope they do. Um, Cause it was great. Cause you got a 12 pack of picks and they were all different. Um, and there was a, like a medium to light pack and there was a medium to heavy pack. Um, I totally recommend getting a variety and trying them out and seeing what you like best. Different guitars have different tones and the picks will bring out different things um, and your playing style will bring out different things. So for beginning, I totally recommend uh, getting one of those variety packs if you haven't already found something that you really like. Because when you look at them and you don't really know what it's like to play a lot, then it can be really challenging. So. Um, when I started out playing, this is actually one of the picks I had from when I was early in, teen, uh, in my teenage years. I used to use these Fender, um, this is a confetti color, the, it's the celluloid picks and they can come looking like this or like this. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different ones. This is a celluloid pick, although this is a Dunlop one, which Dunlop also makes really good picks uh, and they've got a lot of choices. I wish it would focus. It just doesn't want to focus. Um, the celluloid picks are cool because they do give a bright sound and uh, and they're really pretty looking. Uh, and the grip is pretty decent, but uh, they wear out quickly. Um, and that's one of the things I don't like about those picks is they do wear out really quickly. This one, I'm, I'm hoping the camera will show it. Does it just not focus? There, I used to do these pick slides on the electric guitar where I, I would take it and go like that. And it sounds really cool when the guitar is distorting. Uh, and so I put all these grooves in the picks, but it makes them play horribly afterwards. So I started out with the celluloid picks, but then I ended up liking the, the yellow Dunlop picks like these. Um, and there are some that have a tip like this. This is what I was using initially. This actually isn't a Dunlop pick. This is a star pick. Uh, it's made out of exactly the same stuff. So the Tortex uh, material, they're color coded. So the, the reds are really light and the purples are really heavy. And so they just go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, and red is the lightest and purple is the heaviest. Um, but the yellows I felt like were really happy medium. So yellows are basically what would be a medium pick with the with the fender picks um that's about the same it's a 0.73 millimeter um they're really nice so even though yellow isn't my favorite color these were my favorite picks um, and i use them all the time um a lot of guitar teachers will recommend doing the really light picks um that are flexible this is a hot pink one i'm uh this is celluloid um and for beginners, the mediums or the, the lights can be really nice because um, they flex a lot when you play, but um, I just don't like the sound. And I feel like you can still do pretty well with a medium pick because um, it still has some flex to it. Um, so I would recommend going with the mediums. Now these Tortex, I like the Tortex material better because I, I think they hold up to a lot more playing, so they last longer. I like the sound better. It's a little bit uh, warmer and fuller sound. Um, and then I ended up really liking these uh, Tordex 3 picks. So they're still a full-sized regular pick, but they've got um, but they've got the tip like the Jazz 3, um, which is nice. The so Jazz 3 picks are, are much smaller and they're good for electric playing when you're doing a lot of lead stuff, but not 
I don't, they're not really great for rhythm playing because you'll just, you'll end up just screwing up your fingernail. So, um, these are, these were what I liked for a while because they were good for lead and rhythm. Um, and they were cheap and, you know, they costed the same amount of money as, as the regular Tordex picks. I use those for the longest time and I use nothing else. Um, but lately I've gotten more into heavier picks. So you can get some of the Tordex, you know, that are blues like this. Um, and um, they're, they're nice for if you're a more mature player and you've got a, a better grip, um, but they can be kind of hard when you're a beginner because you'll be hard on your strings. Uh, and when you don't know how to hold the pick loosely enough that it moves in your fingers, but tight enough that it doesn't fly out, um, the heavy picks are really hard to use. But um, the more you practice, the better you get and your taste will change. There are also nylon picks. Uh, I never really got into the nylon picks. I know a lot of people who really like the nylon picks. I know some really good players who like the nylon picks. For some reason, they just... They didn't do it for me, um, but that's that's another option. Um, here's an orange Tortex pick. So that's like a, a, a medium light right there. And if you're gonna go with a lighter pick, I would go with like the orange Tortex because they're still pretty light, but they're not just flimsy. Uh, so they've still got a little bit of resistance to them. Um, whereas the, the fully light picks, the red Tortex, uh, in the light fenders and stuff like that. The, it's like playing with a piece of cardstock. It's pretty bad. Um, so that's kind of my rundown of those picks. Um, however, nowadays I use different picks and I actually use a variety and I like the boutique picks. Um, but then you're shelling out some money. I would not buy boutique picks until you're an experienced player and know what you're looking for. The reason why I started going into the more expensive guitar picks is because I wanted to improve my lead playing and I felt like I was being held back by my yellow Tordex picks. So um, I started out, I actually happened to uh, have connections with uh, Vinny Smith, who does V picks, um, and uh, I really like his picks. Um, so he and I are from same area in California, and he was friends with my dad. And uh, when he was starting his business, he gave a couple samples, and um, they didn't really do it for me at first. But um, my guitar playing at the time wasn't really optimal for that and the picks he gave me I think were really great for electric playing but for somebody with a different grip than mine um, my grip is more angled so I like pointed picks and so my favorite my all-time favorite picks for electric playing are the v-pix medium pointed um, and these are cool I like the thickness just the regular 2.75 millimeter these are cool this is the Pearly Gates one. This is the standard, like the original clear ones, which I think are just absolutely beautiful. These are great. I think I like the grip of these better, but I think these last longer. So that's what I would say about that. Um, so that's what I use for electric. I've tried a lot of the V-Picks and he makes a lot of cool ones. Um, there's some other brands of of boutique picks that I think are really good. Um, and actually, uh, V Picks does make some acoustic picks that work pretty well for me too. Where is it? Is it still on the. If you're doing V Picks, you can get the like ultra light ones and they flex like a fender medium. Um, and they're good picks, but they haven't always lasted super long. But if you get the one, uh, the one point five millimeter ones, I think they last a lot. The, the, they do really well. I like them. Um, like so, there's like the Gladiator. There's the medium pointed, which 
I don't have, there's a medium pointed light that's really good. Um, this is a light freakishly large, which is also great for strumming on acoustic. I really totally recommend those. Um, I actually, I've got medium pointed uh, in colors. Um, I requested them and he sent me some. So apparently, at least at the time, they're easy for him to just make me some or he may have already had some. Um, other picks that I really like too, um, blue chip picks are absolutely awesome. Um, I don't actually really like them so much for electric guitar. And again, I think that's more of my personal playing style because um, the material that they make these out of is just extraordinary. Uh, so it's not very pretty. They don't make them in different colors. Um, but it's probably, it's possibly the best pick synthetic pick material that I've ever used. Um, this one actually is engraved with my name. Um, so like $5 extra, you can get it engraved. Uh, this is the TAD 1R. So it has one round edge. I actually don't use the round side. I like pointed picks because it's good for single picking. Um, I like the 50s um, and the 40s, but the 50s, I've been using this a lot. So uh, blue chip picks are super cool, but they're like $35 per pick. You can't lose them. You absolutely mustn't. Um, so you've got to know that you're going to be pretty responsible. Whereas like the, the V picks, they'll range like these are usually about $5. Sometimes he has sales and they go cheaper. Um, and, uh, and I've seen them for less than $5 frequently. So you just watch his website. Um, and that was the most expensive pick I had. But then I think the blue chip picks are probably the most expensive. There's also red bear picks. And I've got a couple of them here. This is a C medium. Um, this is their tough tone material. And it's fine. It's 20 bucks for this pick. They're beveled. The edges, the way they're beveled, it's a right hand speed bevel and it's really cool. The blue chip picks do that too. I like the speed bevels a lot. Um, the V picks ha have a symmetrical bevel and I think that works really well for my electric playing, but um, I like the speed bevels more for acoustic playing because I'm doing more strumming. Um, so this one's really cool. Um, it's a little too bright for my taste. These, these picks that I'm showing you now are not flexible. So they barely flex at all. Um, this is also some more of their like original material. It's a little bit more fragile. Um, they, I think they make it out of like a milk protein. Um, and I, I really like this material, but the red bear picks are super hard to get because they're always sold out. And apparently they've got a pretty small operation, they're handmade, but these are some extraordinarily well-made picks. But uh, at the time these were going for $25 each, but they were hard to get. Um, I think their prices have gone up, which I think is good, honestly, because they're such good picks and they, they should be charging more for them. Um, so these are cool. Uh, I like the Red Bear picks, but I don't, I don't use them a whole lot. Uh, another pick that I use actually a lot. Oh yeah, here's one of the V picks. Uh, this the storyteller is actually one of my favorite V picks for acoustic playing. Um, this one's from 2012, and these boutique picks they last forever. They last forever. Um, I also really like the Wigan picks. Um, and uh, they're really cool. You can get them in black or white. This is the TF, I think this is a 140. Um, and I've used this a lot as I have with the Red Bear, the V-Pick uh, medium pointed. I've used a ton for, acoustic, for electric, but for acoustic, I've used this one a lot. This one's got a lot of mileage on it. This one has a lot of mileage on it too lot of playing hours and they just don't wear out. Um, it's good to buff them out every once in a while, but they, they last just so long. 
I'll probably die before this pick does. Um, so I like the weekend picks. The thing with getting thicker picks like this, though, is that you have to change your playing technique. Um, to be able to get really good tone out of your acoustic guitar using the thicker picks like this um, takes a lot more right hand finesse. I think it's worth it, but not everybody's going to like it. It doesn't sound good on every guitar. It sounds pretty bad on old strings. So if you're playing on newer strings, they sound better. Um, whereas the like medium Dunlop Tordex picks will sound good even on fairly dead strings. But strings are cheap. I Personally, for acoustic and electric guitar, I'd just go with the inexpensive... Um, or I would just buy $5 packs of strings and change them as often as you want. Um, I like Elixir strings. I really like Elixir for bass guitar um, because I like the feel of it. But um, I used to break a lot of strings, but I enjoy the process of changing strings. So to each their own. Elixir strings are great. But anyway, we're not talking about strings. We're talking about picks. Um, I have a huge collection of picks. I've got picks made out of bone, wood. I've even got a couple that are out of metal, which are terrible for your guitar uh, and your strings, but they can make some cool sounds. And sometimes being hard on your tools can help you make the, the music that you want. So it's all an art and um, it is okay for us to wear out our gear for good art, even if, you know, or we're wearing it out quicker. I think guitars are meant to be played until they can't be played anymore. Um, I feel that way about all musical instruments. So anyway, that's my, that's my rundown about guitar picks. Um, to restate just for beginners, I would, I would start with a variety pack. If you're playing acoustic, Get a variety pack and get the medium to light pack, and I think that'll be good. Uh, all right, thank you so much for watching.